deals with a lot every day. But his favorite place to be is in my hand, being sniffed. My name is Cheney Stewart. I am originally from Gahanna, Ohio. I was born in 1994 during Hurricane Griffin, I believe. I had a crush on a boy named Griffin when I was in fifth grade. He never liked me back. I, I used to go to the babysitters and her name was Nina. And Nina, she had red hair, but she was cool. <laughs> So Nina, every time she did the laundry, she wouldn't like to have to carry me on this hip and the laundry basket right here. So she would simply place me in the laundry basket to take me downstairs to do the laundry. So she placed me in the laundry basket, she took me downstairs, she put the laundry in the whatever. Well, when it was getting out of the dryer, she of course brought me back downstairs and she folded the laundry, it was nice and warm, and she placed me right on top of the laundry. And I felt something underneath me. And it was silky, and it was a pillowcase that was so beautiful. I was playing with the pillowcase all day long, and then when my mom, she came to get me, she tried to detach me from the pillowcase to take me home, I started to just throw a fit. I did not want to leave the pillowcase behind. So Nana said, you know what? It doesn't matter that much. She can just keep it. So my mom was like, okay, not knowing that that would start a lifelong addiction. People let me tell you about my best friend. She's a warm-hearted person who loved me till the end. his name was not Bluey. Um, his name was Uh-Oh because whenever I would lose him, which was often in my younger days, I, my mom would say Uh-Oh and I would say Uh-Oh so that became his name. Well then I got more mature. I named him Bluey after his color. So I've known about Bluey since like my middle school years but it never really like clicked that it was actually a thing. I just kind of thought it was something everybody in our youth group like made fun of kind of but then like, my first actual interaction with Bluey was, like, the sen my senior year of high school. We went on this, like, spring retreat for church. We were about to go to a retreat, and, well, Chaney lives right next to the church, but she forgot Bluey, and she, like, sprinted home, almost crying, because she could have forgot Bluey, but didn't. I saw her, like, sniff it at night in the cabin, or, like on our way to the retreat she would sniff it and then like she was always holding on to it and if she didn't have it at like a certain activity she got like really stressed out and everything. He used to be a lot bigger and he was like a full-size blanket at one point and now he's just like a little scrap thing tied in a knot that smells like dust. Over the years he's gone through a lot. One time I was cutting through my neighbor's bushes which were thorny into her yard and Bluey, he got caught on some of the thorns in the thorn bush. And so I just remember I was standing on the other side of the bush. I remember seeing him tangled up in the thorns. And, man, it took a lot to salvage him that day. Uh, since then, he's gone through discoloration. He's been attacked by a lot of dogs. I would lose him all the time. I lost him in Walmart and antique stores in West Virginia. We have to go back and get him when we were in Ohio to West Virginia because I left him in a Walmart there. So that, that's that been like really scary for him emotionally. Bullying has been a big part of his life. My friends, they hate him. They think he's so weird. My boyfriend's really jealous. In middle school when I first heard about Bluey, I was like, oh. Well, that's kind of weird. Like, that's actually kind of really gross. She always wants people to sniff him, and he he doesn't smell all that great. Some people, they say he smells like a dog. Some people say he smells like dirt. 
like dust. He smells like dust. To me, he smells like love. He smells like hope, comfort, home. This is Bluey. He's in physical distress right now. This part isn't even really Bluey. Um, the only remaining remnants of the original piece of fabric that I called Bluey is right here, these, these strings here. Um, some might call this the ruins of Bluey. I call this the heart of Bluey. About a couple years ago at Christmas, my mom noticed that <clears throat> Bluey was coming to an end. As much as I hated to admit it, he could not survive much longer on his own without some support. She introduced to me what she called the Bluey Pod, which she had sewn with love. Uh, it took a little convincing for me, but I realized that it was for the best to have Bluey sewn into the pod as a form of protection. And I've come to love the pod. I, I recognize that it's not really Bluey, but it smells like him and it looks like him and it protects him, so whatever's best for the bluester. I don't plan on taking Bluey into marriage because I realize that that's a lot of baggage, so I plan on keeping him until I find the one and the one proposes to me and puts a ring on it. And then I will have him sewn into my veil, probably right here. I, I can show. I, I'd like him to be like right here and then the veil flowing from him and then I will put the veil in a box so that my husband won't get jealous and I'll keep him in there and I'll take him out and look at him sometimes but I'm not gonna have him I mean I'll let my husband replace Bluey not so much sniffing a little bit it's every girl's got like that stuffed animal that you grew up with or that blanket or something so it's normal to a point like here's normalcy and then like Chaney's on steroids. Chaney's a goofy person and Bluey is a goofy thing so it makes total sense that she has it. I know I mean I've never talked to him we don't I don't he doesn't talk but if he could talk I know what he would say. <laughs> he would say that he has had to go through a lot being my Bluey, but the contentment that he feels when he's right directly under my nose makes it all worth it.